Here's uh, Smokey in the Coronado Island area, California. Great to have you. Coronado Island. Yes. I think. Beautiful right. place. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. I wanted to ask you a couple questions. Um, I'm, I'm not the smartest man in the world by a long shot, and I'm certainly not one of those guys that went to one of them Ivory League schools, but I am confused, and I have a climate question for you, and you seem to be an expert on that. I want to know if you can tell me um, how these scientists can tell us 50 years from now that that water out there is going to be 18 inches higher, but they can't tell us three weeks ahead that there's rain coming to Texas. That's a very, very, that's a very clever question. It's a very shrewd question, and it's a very telling question with a very telling answer. The answer to the first part of your question, why can they predict 50 years from now that the sea level is going to rise? Whatever it is, two feet, 18 inches, or what have you. They can't. I want to tell you something, Smokey. The only quote-unquote evidence for global warming is computer model predictions. Other than that, there isn't any data. We don't have actual records for actual real temperatures of things more than 100 years ago. We have to look at tree rings and ice cores and then have these so-called experts estimate to us what the temperature and climate was. But we don't really know. The temperatures that we take today... Anybody ever wondered why every thermometer is at the airport? You know, that's where the official temperature in any city is, is at the airport. Do you live at the airport? Okay, why is the official sensor at the airport? You know how hot jet exhaust is? What if that thermometer is right away? Why did they not put the thermometer downtown where the heat's reflecting off all the asphalt and buildings? Why don't they put the thermometer in a shaded birdhouse someplace? My point is that the temperature record, they have satellite temperature settings that we can take now that are, that are fairly accurate, the sea level temperatures and, and land-based temperature. But the point is we don't have enough of an accurate historical record to know whether or not things existing today are the norm as God intended. So we tell ourselves that this is the norm, but how do we know this? We don't. It was, it's nothing but vanity that tells us the climate conditions in 2017 are what were intended. And any variance, colder or warmer, from where we are right now is a man-made problem. See how this works? But we know there have been ice ages. We know that much of the western United States was way, way, way underwater. You can see the sediment strata. If you go out to Arizona, New Mexico, look at the mountains and have people know what they're looking at and tell you. They can tell you how many hundreds of tens of millions of years ago that stuff was underwater. We don't know what the temperatures were. We don't know any of this. It's all computer models. The predictions are made in a time range when nobody alive today is going to be alive to know whether the predictions are right. And yet they couldn't predict to us the amount of rainfall and the degree of flooding until the rain had begun here. Now, the experts will tell you, Smokey, that that's because climate and weather are two different things. And you shouldn't intermingle the two. You shouldn't mix them up out there. Except they do. You know, let it get real hot in July and they'll claim, see, see, global warming. They say, wait, you said... Weather and climate are two different things. Well, yes, but there's some overlap, they say. They don't really know. Uh, nobody can. The reason for all this rainfall in Houston is meteorologically explainable. I, I started this in the first half hour, and then the, the vice president called. And maybe I should go through this again at some point. There's a meteorological, not climate change, not some meteorological explanation for everything that happened and is happening. And what is happening is not the worst it's ever happened in Texas or Houston. It's been worse. 
100 years ago, 115 years ago, six to 12,000 people died in a hurricane in Galveston. It's been worse. Flood waters have been higher in Houston by 18 feet than they are today. The drive-bys don't know it, and were they to find out, they don't care. It would get in the way of trying to, 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 trying to say here and image they're trying to create in this story.